Ina Parman was doing social media even before Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, was born. People were coming to her kitchen for cooking lessons, but were swapping information, swapping insights, probably teasing each other, maybe in some cases being unkind to each other, but at least they were doing it face to face in a world that has gone intensely immediate, a lot more social. How is Ina Parman's old school way of slow food and patience and time coping in this revolution, fourth industrial revolution world that we're entering? Are you frightened of it or do you see the opportunities it brings? I, I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, you know, I don't even have a smartphone. I still have a tiny little phone, but... <clears throat> But you have a battery life that lasts five days. <laughs> exactly. And I buy time and at the supermarket. Anyway, I'm surrounded now, now by very clever young people who understand how to work the machinery, if I can put it that way. But I still control the content. It's very important. I mean, I once asked Whitey Busson, um, as the world was going social media crazy, whether or not he had a Twitter account. He says, now I employ somebody to do that stuff. Mm. And you've got some person with a propeller on their cap backwards, sitting upstairs, defining a social media strategy for the Ina Palmer Empire. You are entering this very uncertain world. Entering, but one doesn't have to lose control. And one can never make promises that you can't. Um, you know, stand by. And you can never talk down to people. And you always, if there's a customer unhappiness about, about something, you need to eat humble pie. People go to university, go to Technicon to learn this stuff. They go to marketing courses and get degrees. Your degree has been, I suppose, the school of hard knocks and, mm. uh, you know, three ladles of common sense with mm. a, a dash of a dash of paprika along the way. <laughs> I was going to say, there we go to Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but you know, my mother to come back to her again. She um, worked for a, a veterinary company for many years for a chap called Mr. Ruffle. We grew up with Mr. Ruffle as God himself. And uh, then later on, when he sold the business, my mother started with two partners and had her own business. And if one goes to Jeppistown in Johannesburg, you will find a, a block with her name on. She was one of those original students of the, the University of Jeppistown, where it was a vibrant hub of amazing businesses. And once again, I think that entrepreneurial spirit rubs off. I mean, the entrepreneurial spirit is the elixir that South Africa needs. We're in a space of massive unemployment. The economy is worsening, it feels, on a daily basis. Um, politicians are fighting fires on every front and picking fights wherever they go. It doesn't feel like the economy can sustain itself, yet you're growing at 20% in a supposedly broken economy. And it does come down to a mindset, perhaps, in terms of how you choose to operate inside an economy that's not functioning optimally. Yeah, I think the worrying thing for all of us is that it's actually so easy to fix. It, it, it doesn't take a brain surgeon. This morning in Business Day, there was an interesting article about how we can fix ESCOM very easily by making bricks out of the slurry and, you know, the whole... I don't think it's that difficult, but... Does anybody sit down and really think of the simple solutions? But I mean, there, oh, I mean, you talk about simple solutions. What we do need is a million in apartments to create 200 jobs. And then we have problem solved in mm -hmm. South Africa 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, but it has taken you 30 years to get to this point where you yeah. have the size and the scale and the confidence, yeah, confidence sure. being critical, yeah. to be running a business of this size. Mm -hmm. um, and we, so often we say, well, people must just start their own businesses and that'll solve mm -hmm. the problem. It's not an easy 
path to choose. No, as Graham says, if it was easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of people try and fail. I mean, you, you've been providing recipes. I mean, have you got a, a, a business recipe? Have you got a, a recipe uh, for entrepreneurial success as a woman in trying decades in South Africa for cracking a really tough nut? Uh, I don't know. I wish there was a recipe, but I think the the recipe is Aito Ano Muto in Beko. <laughs> is Beko important as part of that? Beko is important. You, the art of listening and the art of understanding what the reality is, not what you dream it ought to be. The fact that you need to be, the f you are confronted by the problem and it ain't going to go away. You've got to find a way to solve it. You're in 30 countries. You're exporting from South Africa. We're told that South Africa is one, a hard place to do business, two, uh, an, an uncompetitive place to create product and a really difficult place from which to export. The, the, the supply chains are long and complicated and difficult, yet you're doing it. Um, yes, I think the product must also be up to scratch. You know, you can't... Um, try and sell an inferior product. We find, for instance, that um, in the Middle East, our products have great appeal because they are robust, real tastes, that kind of thing, and that appeals to their sense of taste. We find in Europe where the food can be quite ordinary, you know? If you can boil up a pot of cheese and encourage mm. people to dunk bits of bread in it, <laughs> you can sell them anything. And the Swiss have perfected that. Yeah. <laughs> Ina Palmer, so, lovely to see you. Thank you very much for sharing some stories from 40 years of gracing South Africa's kitchens to still being relevant and competitive and productive and an exporter and a creator of jobs in an environment like South Africa, which has hardly been conducive or easy place to do business. Ina Parman is a legend of small business in South Africa. Not so small anymore. I have asked her previously to disclose her turnover, but it's a private company. But I bet it's big. 30 countries, big markets in South Africa, sales forces and people doing the jobs. It's a good South African story. Thank you so much for watching Taking Stock here on ENCA and to Ina Parman and to her kitchen. Thank you very much indeed. Good night.